content on agrarian industry in Sri Lanka. The content for my presentation is as stated above. Firstly, let's draw your attention to the background of the study. The agrarian industry is considered as one of the major springboard industries in the world as it has a huge impact over the, uh, over the success of any industry in a country. This is also a typical start business for many organizations and many countries looking into industrialization because of the lower fixed cost involved and the use of high, uh, high level of labor. Well, looking at the Sri Lankan role in this context, it can be said that the pearl of Indian Ocean, Sri Lanka, was once world renowned for its apparel exports. Sri Lanka also once dominated the international apparel industry. But, however, over time there had been a decrease in the apparel exports. As shown in figure 1, you can see that there is a drastic drop of apparel exports starting from the year 2004, whereas countries such as Bangladesh, China, Pakistan and India had been constant and all have been increasing their exports to the US market. Further, moving on to the table number 1, you can see that there is a 0.5% decrease of apparel exports in the year 2015. As I stated earlier, the apparel industry of Sri Lanka has faced many ups and downs throughout its lifespan. This has been due to many, uh, various reasons. Some of the reasons if you take are the direct factors and indirect factors affecting the value chain, of which uh, all in all it can be considered as the value chain. Based on this, the researcher developed the problem statement for the research of how Sri Lanka can regain its loss position in the apparel market by giving specific attention to the value chain. Here, the researcher focuses on the value chain as it is not being properly addressed by most of the organizations in Sri Lanka and in all other countries. Based on the problem statement, the research objective for the research was developed, that is to explore the factors affecting the value chain activities of the apparel industry, to see the relationship between value chain components and firms' growth. In pertinent to this, the research questions were developed, that is to see what are the factors affecting the value chain activities of the apparel industry, what is the relationship between value chain components and firms' growth. Based on this, the researcher conducted a literature review. First, let's look at the previous studies conducted on factors affecting apparel value chain. Jeremy, in the year 1999, in one of his studies, stated that there are various geographic and cultural background of a uh, country that has an impact over the value chain. In line with this, also in this research, he states that the role of the trade policies plays a key, com key role in the value chain. In year 2000, a research conducted by a uh, surgeon articulated that delivery, consumption and maintenance of a particular good and service has direct influence over the value chain. Again, in another study conducted by Jeremy in year 2003, he suggests that the apparel value chain is affected by the buyer and supplier, giving more auto autonomy to the supplying firm and creating more possibilities for innovation and learning. Moving on to see studies conducted on the relationship of value chain and customer satisfaction. According to, as you can see, according to Christopher in year 2004, he has stated that the fashion markets face rapid changes due to new trends coming in. Here, this is mainly because of the change in consumer preferences. Uh, and in year 2004, a study conducted by Bruce, he states that the textile and clothing has market characteristics which are also very uh, changing quickly because of the product, product life cycle, high volatility, low predictability, and a high level of in-cost purchase, making such issues a quick response to satisfy the consumer. Humphrey, in year 2006, suggested in his study that the way the value chain is organized determines the global value chain customers. Lastly, looking at the studies conducted on the effect of value chain on cost and profit, uh, in year 2000, as research conducted by Humphrey states that the number of the, uh, not, that a large number of buyers can be attracted through value chain, making a huge impact over the sales of the organization. Uh, lastly, Bruce in year 2003 concludes that the textile and the apparel industry has been neglected in terms of supply chain management, making a negative influence over the cost and profit of the organization. 
Based on the literature, the researcher developed the conceptual framework, as you can see here. According to previous study, the value chain activities are divided as primary activities and supporting activities. These are the independent variables of this research, and the first growth is considered to be the dependent variable of the research. As you can see here, Jeraffy in year 2003 and Sturgeon in year 2000, they have conducted studies about the value chain activities, basically the primary activities and the supporting activities. And uh, Christopher and Bruce in year 2004 has conducted studies with, uh, regarding the relationship between these value chain activities and the firm's growth. Based on this, the empirical model was developed by the author, uh, where, as I stated earlier, the independent, uh, dependent variable of the research is the firm's growth and the independent variables are the primary and the secondary activities of the value chain. The operationalization is elaborated as above. The primary activities are inbound logistics, operations, outbound logistics, marketing and sales, and services which were determined by factors such as the storage facilities for goods, the layout of the firm, the marketing strategy, etc., which were measured using the five-point Likert scale. Moving down to the supporting activities, which are the firm's infrastructure, human resource management, technology and procurement, which were determined using factors such as the internal infrastructure layout, the number of workers in the firms, the technology adapter, etc., which is also measured using the five-point method scale. Drawing attention to the firm's growth, which is the dependent variable of the study, uh, this was uh, mainly based on the customer satisfaction as it is a major component that determines the growth of any firm, not only in that firm, but in, all, in any other organization. Based on this uh, interview, uh, this, the data was collected using interviews uh, conducted with production managers on which uh, the firm's growth was determined using factors such as the customer's happiness, recommendation to others, repeat purchase intentions, and enhancement to order size, which was also measured using the five-point figure scale. Moving on to the sample profile of the research, the research uh, was based on primary data, and this was collected through 30 questionnaires collected from uh, 30 apparel firms in the Kalampo district, selected using the random sampling method for the quantitative data analysis, which was using the probability method, and the production managers were interviewed from 10 apparel firms using pr uh, purposive sampling method as qualitative data analysis by using the non-probability method. As you can see in the screen, the, uh, the data collection profile is quantitative data was collected using semi-structured questionnaires and the qualitative data was collected using interviews. The data analysis profile, the sample adequacy for the research was measured using the KMO test, the validity measured using the expert validity, the reliability using the Cron batch alpha using the SPSS version 22. And lastly, the model fit indexes were measured using the ANOVA significance and the R square. The research I mean for the research is as elaborated above. The philosophy used by the researcher is positivism as the, researcher in, uh, the research was investigated on quantitative data. The approach used by the researcher was the deductive method as the researcher used research questions and research objectives to conduct the study. The strategies used by the researcher is the case study as the entire study, uh, data analysis was based on interviews and questionnaires. The choice of the researcher was mixed method as both quantitative data analysis and qualitative data analysis was used. Lastly, the time horizon is cross-sectional as it was based on a sample survey. <coughs> Analyzing all the data, the researcher was able to come up with the following figures. As you can see here, the KMO value was 0.648, to which was used to measure the sample adequacy. As you can see, it is in the limit of the standard range, so you can call it adequate. The reliability test, which was used to measure, which was uh, measured using the Cron batch alpha, is 0.741, which also can be made, uh, called fairly adequate. And the model fit, the ANOVA significance, is 0.001. You can say that the model is fit. And also, the R square value is 70%, where again the model is fit. Moving on to the coefficient table, as I stated earlier, the primary activities inbound logistics, outbound logistics, operations, marketing, and sales, 
services of which marketing and sales has an inverse relationship to the firm's growth. Moving on to the secondary activities, the firm infrastructure, human resource management, technology and procurement also out of which human resource management is inversely related to firm's growth. Why marketing and sales has an inverse relationship to firm's growth? As everyone is aware, the apparel firms are mostly focused on improving the product quality and delivering a better, better product to the uh, customers rather than marketing, uh, marketing their products. Therefore, since less focus is given to marketing and sales compared to other activities, it has an inverse relationship. Moving on to you, why human resource management has an inverse relationship? This is also because, as uh, again, as everyone is aware, most of the time the apparel firms are run because of the lower level commitment of the lower level employees, such as the operators and other tailors, uh, where there is less involvement of the top level managers and the middle level managers. Moving on to the significance of the study, you can see clearly see that. The supporting activities are significant to the dependent variable of the study, which is the firm's growth, out of which procurement is highly significant. This is mainly because the activities that the customers can actually see and the activities they enjoy are the secondary activities. Therefore, these are more dependent to the firm's growth. The, for moving on to the findings and the conclusions of the researcher. Uh, the researcher was able to find out that there is a massive positive impact of value chains over the apparel industry, which determines the sustainability of the apparel industry. And the researcher was a also able to conclude that there are many factors affecting the value chain, starting from the point where the uh, materials are supplied to the uh, delivery of the end product to the consum consumers and the after uh, services provided. Uh, therefore, it can be concluded that Effectively and efficiently conducting these value chain activities, Sri Lanka can regain its lost position in the apparel market, putting Sri Lanka in the topmost position in the world yet again. Finally, moving on to the further researcher, the further researcher that can be done on this subject are to see the impact of value chain of foreign markets, the awareness of value chains by apparel manufacturers, and to see the impact of cost over the efficient conduct of value chains. This concludes my presentation. Thank you.